Well, it's almost Pixel A series time of year once again here, at least on the regular timeline. Of course, last year's Pixel 5a coming out towards the end of the year, almost as an afterthought. Like, hey, we had these things. We made them. They're sitting in the back gathering dust. Let's go ahead and push them out anyway. You'd expect an announcement coming in the next few weeks for the Pixel 6a. Interesting questions to be raised, though, because it's clear that Google wants to go with a Tensor chip even in the Pixel 6a devices. So it's not like previous years where all they had to do was slap some plastic on it instead of the premium build that they had for the regular Pixel, put in a lower Snapdragon, and sell it at a cheaper cost. There's different decisions to be made here. And what I feel is they're quickly going to find out what Apple's been going through, especially this year with the new iPhone SE, in that if everything has an A15, how do you start to differentiate the different price points and not necessarily justify the cheaper phone that you're coming out with, but with the cheaper phone existing, how do you justify those more expensive devices, that $1,100 iPhone, that $1,000 iPhone 13 with an SE, with an A15? Google's going to run into that same problem. And to me, it's even more complicated with Google because they have a mid-range phone already that's pretty good on performance in the Pixel 6 at $600. How much could they possibly undercut that? The Pixel A series typically comes out at $449. There's a bounce. Wasn't there the 5G version at $500? So if you put a Tensor in there, if you make the, the Adam Tech Odyssey was saying, well, they're going to put the old camera in there. Okay, that's fine. I understand that might be some cost savings. To me, that doesn't make that much of a difference. If that sensor did perfectly fine for however many years, it's mostly on the computational photography side anyway, and Tensor is going to be handling that. You wrap it in plastic? Okay, is that really going to be worth X amount of $100 less? To me, if honestly, if it were me, I'd use the Pixel 6 at this point, cut the price to $499 or $449, and say, here you go. Here's the mid-range phone for this portion of the year. But if they're going to do it, I don't understand what they can do from the performance side if it has a tensor to make it not eat into too much of the other flagship phone sales that they have. Could they make it way under rammed? They could. Google certainly makes some goofy decisions. Could they add something else that just makes it hideous? wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility when you're talking about Google Pixel design decisions. However, I think the way that they really can absolutely destroy the phone market and undercut everybody is they absolutely have to do the savings. Okay, give us the old camera sensor that we had on Pixels in previous years. Give us the Tensor still so the performance is there and you can have the nice Pixel Android experience and that's there. You want to put in a little less RAM? Okay, it's not quite 8 gigs. You want to give us 6 you want to wrap it in plastic? Well, there's plenty of colored plastics that you could have there. And a lot of people even prefer that. You don't have to put a case on it. You don't have to worry about scratching or cracking or all the rest of it. So you can have some savings there. My idea would be for them to blow everybody out of the water. Come in at 349 Get back to the feeling of the original Pixel 3a. Sell it as, hey, this camera, this experience, Tensor chip, 349 399 in fact, I think the first one that came out was 399 the Pixel 3a, and then the XL was a bit more. But within months, you could see them, within a couple months, rather, you saw them at 349 So if they could come out with a phone that, you know, you don't worry about the build, you don't worry about the screens, it's not going to be 120 hertz. Maybe they throw 90 hertz in there, but if it's cheap enough, you don't even worry about that. Give us a 60 hertz OLED panel. Perfectly fine. 1080p, at least. You're good to go. You have a lot of people that would be loving that clean pixel experience with the camera, with the rest of it, with that design, which a lot of people like. I happen to like the Pixel, pixel 6 design. I don't have a problem with it. So I think you'd have a winner if you came in sub $400. Because if you start, if you go in over that, then I understand maybe you're trying to pair it with the Pixel 7 later in the year. You're not necessarily worried about the sales of the Pixel 6 at this point. But it becomes an awkward sell. If you're at $449, $499, for a Tensor and a plastic Pixel 6, you might as well just give us a Pixel 6 at a discounted price at this point. But it's going to be interesting because this is the first time that Google's really had to deal with this. And Apple 
for better or worse, you could say, you know, they haven't done a great job with it. That's why next year there's rumors that the iPhone 14, not all of them will feature the A16 or whatever they're calling the next generation of their bionic silicon. They might have it where the regular version of the 14 or the mini or whatever gets an A15 with the Pro versions and the Pro Max getting the newer chip. That would be a way to differentiate and justify the higher price point of the flagship devices. The iPhone SE, that's why there's not an SE Plus, right? If there were an SE Plus with an A15, it would really eat into most of those mid-tier and the iPhone 13s of the world. People just getting one of those would look, I'd be one of them. I'd be looking at an iPhone SE Plus. So how does Google navigate this different waters for them? It's not, you can't put a Snapdragon 695 in it with four gigs of RAM and call it a day. You're going to have to do, whether it's features, whether it's the build quality, whether it's the price, you're going to have to come up with something drastic and different to really set it apart from the Pixel 6. And that's, to their credit, okay, because the Pixel 6, we're going to have the six-month review of the Pixel 6 tomorrow. We bashed it, made a lot of fun of Google, and rightfully so. They make some really dumb decisions. But at the end of the day, $599, that's a pretty good deal. Tensor is right there on power. It's certainly pound for pound with every other Android device out there in regards to battery life. And some people get much greater battery life than I do on it. So it's solid there. It's a good build. It's an interesting design. So $599, hard to top that. And to me, you can't top it on a rebadge, still a Tensor $499. To me, that's not going to be enough to warrant saving just $100. To me, they, they got to come in at $399. Let me know what you think down below. Long Island Watch, longislandwatch.com. Link will be in the description. Mark has come out with some really awesome new watches today. The video was the racing theme watch is really cool. Check out the link. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.